Delarue, I can assure you, it ain't nobody from around here. I will give you two hours to find the man that did this. That's impossible. Or you bring me two of your people. I'm innocent, please don't! No. Let him rest in peace, Princess. I will take care of you now. And we could use people like you for ever gonna face that murder. Aren't you two soldiers back where you came from? I need a revolver, a holster, and some ammunition for my Winchester. Did you ever fight in the war? I did. Who was the enemy? Germans. You have my respect. I most likely would have missed it, which would have been a real shame, because I find it fascinating on multiple levels. So please bear with me as I try to address each point. Now this is a Danish Western, and it looks very well done. It looks like it could compete with not just your standard Hollywood film, but top Hollywood films in terms of cinematography, uh, the, the writing, the acting. It looks very good, and I think it really speaks to the growing competitiveness of the foreign film industry. And it makes me wonder just how much longer Hollywood can keep their foreign competition at bay. For instance, this film does not have a U.S. release date. And you know that if it does acquire one, it's only going to be a limited release in the specialty market. Uh, and the reasoning is, is because Hollywood wants to, you know, of course, I guess, you know, keep out the competition, which is really a shame. I'm a big, big supporter of broadening the horizons of the American moviegoer. As I often point out, we are the only country in the world that does not really get exposed to the films from other countries, uh, which is unfortunate. They, uh, when you go to a, another country to, a, to see a, a movie at a regular movie theater, uh, when you look up at the marquee, they have films from all over the world playing there. Uh, but we are, you have to really search them out if you want to see such fare in the United States. Uh, but anyway, so this film, you know, I'm sure that America would say, well, the Hollywood would go, well, instead of releasing it here, let's remake it. Let's try and, you know, do our own version. And for instance, you see The Raid. The Raid, I think, is one of the most recently successful films um, in terms of getting foreign films getting the U.S. Uh, as attention, you know, somewhat, more, uh, you know, bleeding into the mainstream. Not as, to any degree that I think it deserves, but at least, it, you know, that's how good The Raid is. It's been able to really fight back against Hollywood's best efforts, I think, to squash. Uh, and of course Hollywood's prepping an American remake. And then also there's a film called The Loft. I believe this is a Belgian film. Quite successful, hugely successful in Belgium. Uh, Belgium. And you know, they want it, instead of releasing it here, they're planning to do a U.S. remake. In fact, they shot it. It's in the can and it's just sitting there. I think it didn't get released because of lack of star power. It's like Carl Urban, James Marsden, Eric Stone Street for Modern Family. So at the end of the day, we didn't get the original hit Belgian film and we didn't get the American remake. We got nothing. We missed out on the story entirely. And I just think that's a real shame. So I hope that films, uh, as, as I said, as foreign films get better and better in quality and are on par with the Hollywood content, that maybe it's Maybe some small distributor will try and make a, a niche for themselves uh, by distributing foreign fare. Uh, maybe some uh, uh, theater company will take it upon themselves to distribute this to in a more broader to a more broader audience. I just hope that something breaks uh, so that you know we can have uh, an open in, an open industry here you know, that we can be just like the rest of the world. I think it's you know we're missing out. I think that's the bottom line. We're missing out on some great content. And anyone who's seen the raid too can. Uh, to can, can back that up because that's a phenomenal film. And if you haven't seen The Raid 2, go see it. Now, the other thing I like about this film is that just like we tend to kind of ignore foreign content uh, in, in our movie theaters, uh, I think that the U.S. history books really ignore a lot of the, um, the foreign stories coming into this country. For instance, how long have we been to having a, the Western genre here? And we have yet to see uh, 
it explore a foreign national, a foreign born person come and try and make their own way here. It's always someone from, uh, you know, the East Coast trying to make it out into the Wild West. It's always an American story. Um, they never really address uh, Europeans coming here. So I think that's a, a wonderful uh, approach, a wonderful angle, and it's a true story. And, you know, so I, I'm, I'm frustrated that, you know, uh, having studied American history, have been a fan of American history, this is something that's just not widely known. And I, I, it's frustrating, as I said, as I, you know, I'm, I guess I'm just frustrated that we're just so close-minded in terms of our entertainment and our history that we're not getting the, the true picture. And I think that's one of the great things about the Internet age that we, you know, the filters have been removed. And so we can, you know, in many ways, uh, we're finding out the truth about things. And so that's why I think a film like this is great. I would love, love, love to see the American West from the perspective of a European who came here also for a better life. I think that's phenomenal. So I really like that aspect of the film a lot. Now the other thing that I think is very interesting here is that I said this is a Danish Western and it also reminds me of the Japanese remake, current remake of Unforgiven with Ken Watanabe. Now that still takes place in Japan. Uh, they kind of swapped out cowboys for samurais I believe. But this is a true Western. It takes place in the American West. Uh, and it's fascinating to see these countries, uh, Denmark and now um, Japan tackle the Western genre, which, by the way, Americans aren't really interested in right now. Uh, the Westerns, uh, Western, Amer Hollywood Westerns just have not been able to perform at the box office, uh, and they're making increasingly less of them as a result. I think perhaps one of the, the biggest uh, Western that came out recently uh, was 310 to Yuma, and that was a while ago at this point. That's the James Mangold film with Russell Crowe and Christian Bale and Ben Foster. It's a phenomenal film, really well done. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, it just never connected with audiences at the box office. For some reason, Americans have decided that a Western doesn't warrant a trip to the theater. However, they still do enjoy it on TV sometimes. For instance, the Hatfields and McCoys on the History Channel, as we've been discussing uh, with all these Kevin Costner movies, because that's a direct result of the success of that miniseries, was very well received. And as I just noted, again, really helped Kevin Costner's career. But overall, the Western doesn't perform, to the point where I think... Um, Seth MacFarlane might be in trouble with A Million Ways to Die in the West simply because it's in the West. Uh, Americans just have rejected this genre for now. It still has a cult fan base, but it's just not a popular genre. So I'd be curious, maybe it plays better overseas, but I'm just, I think it's fascinating to see such an American genre be tackled by other countries. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what they do with it. So this looks like, it looks like a good film. I wish the trailer played up the foreign angle a little bit. It does at the beginning. Uh, and boy, by the way, good thing his uh, wife died so he could romance that hooker. That's the vibe that I was getting. I was like, what? But I like Mads Mikkelsen a lot. I think Jeffrey Dean Morgan, you know, he's, he's you know, a television actor, but he thinks like, it looks like he's doing a good job. Every, you know, I'm a big fan of Eva Green. I think she's getting more and more fans by the day. Good for her. And it's a very well cast film because it has an international appeal. Mads Mikkelsen, Eva Green, she's a, actually a French actress, but she's very well um, integrated into Hollywood at this point, and her star is rising, so it's good that she's in there. And then you have Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who is familiar to U.S. audiences. And the film just looks really well done. So I'm really rooting for it, and I love this uh, unique angle to the, to the Western, a true angle, and something that we never explore, uh, which is frustrating. So what do you guys think? Um, are you as in favor of broadening our horizons, both in terms of movie-going and history as I am? Uh, or do you feel the Western, or are you still, is it not enough to re-energize your interest in the Western? Are you someone who's lost interest in it? Maybe you were never interested in it. Or do you not understand why people don't enjoy Westerns anymore? Uh, write your thoughts down below. Uh, and also for the, you know, of course, a lot of people watch these videos who do not live in the United States. Are Westerns still popular where you live? Uh, and what do you think of the competitive competitiveness of the foreign film industry? Do you think it's increasing? Uh, and how do you like being able to have to sample movies from all over the world when you go to the movies? Do you feel that we are indeed missing out over here? So thank you very much for tuning in to my trailer review. I hope you enjoyed it, and you can check out some more episodes right now.